we had uh, gotten up to around 1960. I think it was around 60, 61. Ellen was, had been born and Uncle Brad was here. And I think Mom and Daddy had gotten married. We can, we can catch Mom and Daddy getting married. Uh, well, they were married in 59. Yeah. Was you, were uh -huh. you proud to see your daughter get married? Yeah. Kind of. Uh, kind of wondering where the years had gotten, though, hadn't you? Well, it was. Well, when the first thing comes, it's a little bit different from the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah, I can. But, I bet uh, it's a lot different when, when you, after two or three, it kind of gets an old hat, don't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure do. But, uh, I, I don't really know. It's hard to have a start, Jeff. Uh, you, you think it was around about the time your mother and daddy married? Yeah, I think it's '59, '60 is when we stopped talking last time. Oh, okay. I forgot to look at the old tape and see. Well, but, uh, uh, but she, yeah. Mama finished high school, married all in about two weeks' time, didn't she? Yeah. Had mm -hmm. a lot of change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They married at Southside. And uh, Francis furnished the flowers, and we got most of them, though. We got a lot of them with stuff out of the woods and things to decorate the little old church. He got married at Southside, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, your uh, little granddaddy was preaching there at the time, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He started there in 1937. Okay. And uh, preached there until he left. He preached there 31 years. Yeah, I think I remember when he quit preaching. Uh, preached there 30, 31 years. And, uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> well, we got off phone, Mama called. Uh, yeah, he preached for 31 years there at Southside. Were you a deacon yet then in 1959? No, I didn't. I, they asked me to be deacon there several times, Jeff, but I, uh, they asked me, and I didn't take it, but Hollis did, uh -huh. and I wouldn't take it till after Daddy left. Mm -hmm. I was a deacon right after the, he left from then until... Didn't want... It. He, he left when? 68, 67, 68, 69? Mm -hmm. I remember when he quit. I was, I was probably four or five years old. So well, we went into the new church in yeah. 66, yeah. and I think he preached there about two years or a little better after it was 68 69 i don't remember it probably the last part of 68 that he he left Did they wanted him, him to take it full time full time and he wouldn't do it he, he didn't want to leave the little churches without no him. he didn't want to leave his uh country churches and did, did uh um did you ever do any lay speaking there lay preaching do any preaching at all not then i did later I did under Jerry Haley, oh, okay. uh, but not not long then. Were you delivering the mail at that time, by 58, 60, 61? Yeah, well, from 50, I think about 58. Just part-time? Yeah, yeah I've taken, taken in 59, regular, 59, 60, and 61, when Mr. George Winter got hurt. Uh huh. He ran I, no shell station down here, didn't he? No. Mr. George Hunter got hurt. Oh, how it happened to him? And uh, he he got run over up here at Gibson's, and he was out two years and a half. Mm. Like they killed him. So he he was out two and a half years, and you you quit you went. They quit the mail and carried the mail two and a half years, and then uh, kept substituting for him uh, on through. Uh, I don't really know why I went back to the mill in 62, uh -huh. January 62, and uh, kept substituting him until he retired. Then I substituted about two years for Kenneth Solomon. Uh, he, didn't want, he got in the route next. Did you want yeah. it? Did you want to deliver the mail? As yeah, I would like to have it, but I, I didn't get a chance. If it's like it is now, I would have. If it yeah. substituted, if he had passed the examination, could have taken it. I had passed the examination. Politics. Well, you know? Yeah, it's politics back then, and it happened with a grade of 83, but uh, it was politics and I couldn't get it, so I had to go back to the mill, and I, and I substituted up to 
I don't know. Probably 69. I can't remember now. When did Granny start driving the bus? You hmm. remember? Jeff, I'll have to figure that one out. She quit in 79 and she drove... drove no, she drove. She quit before 79, didn't she? Wait a minute. I'm thinking to tell you something else. She quit, retired in 79 oh, okay. at the mill. Uh -huh. And uh, she worked eight years. So that would have been 61. 71. I mean 71, that she started regular with, with a school bus. Okay. Yeah. What year was it she started regular? 61? No, she, she started in the mill in 71, 71 and, she, and she drove the school bus eight years. Okay, so that would be 63, year I was born. She yeah. probably started the year I was born, but drove bus 33, didn't she? At yeah. first, and then bus 33. Well, now I may have that mixed up. Let me get this straight. Shoot. Ellen, Ellen was still going to school. Yeah, uh, Ellen was probably a second, second or third grader. Yeah. But anyway, she drove the school bus eight years. I know that much. And uh, I'll get it right in a minute, completely right. <laughs> Sorry. She quit, quit the cotton mill in when uh, we moved to Montgomery in 1941. Uh huh. And she stayed away from the cotton mill 31 years. So 60, 62. Then. And. Uh, no. 62, 72, she went back. 72, here. she went back. And take eight years from that, and that's when she started driving the school bus. Okay, so 60, 64. It'd be 64. year after I was I got it right now. <laughs> when y'all, so what year did y'all add on the, the room out here, in the bathroom and the washroom? It's 1960. 1960, got running water. What, that, well, what? No, I had running water for then. I mean, running water out there. And, oh. I had no. I had uh, I had water in the house from 1950 on. Yeah. I didn't build a bathroom because the well didn't want to, wasn't really capable of keeping it up very well. Now, ain't but, that a funny story about that? Y'all just gonna add on a little bitty room when you came back home from work and granted then had Mr. B out there and then tore it out. It big. was no, it was the same size room, but we were gonna have all that out there to put our. She had that. We had that chest freezer then. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have the freezer and a washing machine and and all that out there. The place to inside where we could do our vegetables and all. Uh -huh. More or less, an enclosed back porch. Uh -huh. And gonna have the door on the south end of it where the wind wouldn't come in so hard when you open the door. Right. And I come home from the mill and they done taken their double windows out and had that thing fixed. But uh, all of them up there. Be dried in, huh? Yeah. Uh huh. Well, yeah, that was that was in 1960, but now I put water in here in the in the kitchen with a sink in 1950, uh, 51 somewhere along. We had one out here long. We didn't draw water very long. What kind of car were you driving in, when you delivered mail? You remember? I had several for 13 years. See. Yeah. What was when you were doing it full time? What kind of car did you have in the early 60s? Well, I had a. 50, I had a 53 Ford that I carried it on a while, and it's the only car I had to, ever had the motor to go bad. The oil pump quit on me one day, and mm -hmm. it went bad on me. And I bought a 55 and carried it a while on it, and then traded it in for a brand new 60 model Ford. That's the only new car you ever bought, eh? It's, yeah, and I bought a brand new pickup. Yeah, that's right. Oh, brand new pickup, and that one was brand new. I yeah. remember, I remember when I was a little boy, you had a, I think it was a, a cream color, a beige Buick. I think it was a Buick. Had a, had an aftermarket air conditioner down there underneath. It had a funny kind of uh, speedometer. It had a numbers out across there, and this line would come out. It turned red and green and or green and yellow, I, I don't remember exactly. I never, I never owned a Buick, so this one I got now. Well, it may not have been a Buick. It may have been uh, an Oldsmobile or, or something else. I, I just, or a Chrysler. I can't remember that, yeah. I don't know. I had so many. I had it about 1960, 
Seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, somewhere along in there. Well, I can tell you all I own. I own if you see, I bought that nineteen sixty and drove it. I don't know till I had a hundred and I believe a hundred and seventeen thousand miles on it, or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I believe the next next car I bought was a. 1966 beige colored Dodge. That may have been it. It probably was then. It, it was a Dodge. a Dodge. It was a 66 Dodge. Four four door car. Yeah. Had a had an air conditioner mounted under the dashboard, didn't it? Could have. I can't remember. Yeah, that. I remember it. I remember. I think it was in that car. And I traded it off for a 68 Plymouth, that blue one that Joy drove. The VIP. Yeah. And, and Ellen drove also yeah. up there in mm -hmm. Alabama. Yeah. I remember talking about driving that barge down some of those yeah. narrow streets up there. Of course, now I had that old Chrysler during that time, but it got wrecked. That station wagon? No, the kind of Chrysler that Mr. Cohn gave me in Olean. You had a station wagon one time, didn't you? Yeah, a Dodge station green? wagon. What, green? Green? Green Dodge station it wagon. It got wrecked too, didn't it? Yeah. And, uh, I got hit out here for it all the same year. Yeah. yeah. They got hit out here. I stopped talking to Bradley and a fella come out drunk out of Fort Pot and hit me from behind. Uh. And the drunk one come out over on the bypass and got to Dodge. And uh, I had a green pickup I carried the mail on a while too, a Chevrolet pickup. You know, you probably don't ever remember it. I don't it. remember that one. But that I one. did. And I always had a mess of them all second handed most. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I carried the mail actually about thirteen years. It was thirteen years. Part time and worked in the mill. And only oh, worked some other little jobs with little bits of time Jeff. She worked at Foster's too. I remember working at Foster's for a while. Well she never did work long anywhere. She worked a little bit up at Fort Deposit at one time. Yeah. And uh, I remember that. She worked a little bit out at Bosses, I think. I'm not sure, but I think she did. And uh, just little jobs that way, but she wouldn't, she she couldn't stay away from Maryland and she, you know, she, and it was just too hard on her. Yeah. And we done just as well with her not working as we did working. And we didn't have nobody to actually to keep the children out here. And we didn't yeah, want to hire just them. you and Little granddaddy and grand, little granddad. Well, we didn't want to make them have to yeah. see after. I was so, on the houses out here until Miss Henderson built her house, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, well, well, the uh, house that Wiley lives in up there and this and yeah. down here with Thompson's at Old Man Old Bush's home. Yeah. And of course, Ursula Thompson's house is up there. Yeah. That's and, right. uh, Otto Bush lived there a while. He had two two children, and uh, Miss Penny and Mr. Bud Bush lived up in the other house there. That little bitty one. Bud Bush. That little bitty house. No, in that big house where Wiley lived. Up oh, there. okay. Old okay. old Hartley home. I was thinking on I was they, thinking on up the road up there where. No, right got. up here where Wiley lived. They bought that place and lived there until she died, and then he he sold it. And uh, it was, I don't know what year he sold it anyway, but uh, I, we have some pictures of uh, of you, uh, Mom and Dad, that I've seen, so I think made 1965, you had a flat top. I, remember I wore it a good long while after I come out of the service, but I probably didn't bring, I don't know if I wore it up to 65 or not. I think you did. I think there's some pictures made, I might, I might made Easter of that year, I think. That was the year Barbara was born. I think born in 65 no, or 66. No, she was born in 66. Well, January 66. Well, anyway, those pictures of yeah. Easter, you still have She born January 66. Uh, yeah, I probably did. It, it wore good that way. It didn't have to... Yeah, call it and wash your head real easy. <laughs> you were smoking a pipe. I started, I started doing that when I was in World War II. I had never wore it that way only when I was a boy. Yeah. Well, I didn't wear it then, but it cut shorter. But I started wearing it then. And I come back with it, and I just kept on. You uh, you were smoking a pipe too then, weren't you? 
Yeah, I smoked a pipe for a long when time. When did you start that? I don't know, about, I guess when I was overseas. I remember, I remember smoking, smoking a cob, corn cob pipe back overseas. I got a picture of me smoking one overseas. I remember you smoking old red Paul Malls too. Yeah, I smoked a good bit of cigarettes, but not many packs. I didn't, I didn't never get up to a pack a day hardly. That's funny. I don't. I remember seeing the cigarettes, but I never ever remember seeing you with one in your hand. Well, I didn't smoke them very often. I didn't. Some people smoked three packs a day back then. Yeah. But, but I didn't smoke that much. I didn't care much about cigarettes. Never did care much about and cigarettes. I, I remember you well with a pipe. Yeah, uh, I smoked a pipe more. One with two teeth outside, but Yeah, <laughs> I remember your teeth being worn yeah. out on the... Yeah. Which side was it? Your left side? Uh -huh. Yeah, your yeah. left side. Yeah, I remember that. Cause you, I got I, those crowned, though. It don't, it don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I remember, I remember in, that, in that room you had your recliner. And then above it you had a... Look like a little shelf mine on the wall. You had all that stuff in your paw yeah. ball and your pipe. And yeah. What kind of tobacco did you smoke? Pipe tobacco. Press Albert? Yeah, not much press Albert. Sir Walter Robin. Yeah. The red, mm -hmm. it had the red and black stripes on it. Well, it was more of a yellow. Yeah. Can. Uh, but I, it was Sir Walter Robin. Well, I wouldn't have never started smoking, but I got food in the back when I worked work in the mill. Yeah. They told me to chew some. I wouldn't get to lick, through, bleed through my mouth. Yeah. And I, that's why I got started chewing. I had never used tobacco. I wasn't using tobacco when me and Olin married. I, I, I shouldn't have ever done it, but it, it, it was a help in there, I think. I had it help me as long as I worked in that. Yeah. But I quit it all. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of deciding, ain't it? You was up here the night I quit. You yeah, didn't you know it at the that, time, but I did. About 19, it's after you and Miss Mary married, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hadn't been about, what, six, eight years? I think it was, no, it's been longer than that. Yeah, I believe. It was, it was after y'all built this room, wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Well, we built this room 15 years ago, actually. Yeah, it sure don't seem like 15 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> it don't seem like 15 years. Oh, I expect it's been every bit of 10 years, Jeff, if not longer. You were up here just, I believe, just before Thanksgiving. I don't think it was. Yeah, but I don't remember. Long the about now. I don't want to make me decide that night, but I decided, well, I'll just quit chewing tobacco. I mean, I did. I didn't chew, chew no more. I decided it was too much trouble and too nasty, and I just. Mary never did say a word about it. She didn't ask me. But I bet anything. she's happy about it now. Yeah. Yeah. Your daddy dips, he dips snuff, and your so, mama dips snuff. To so they got to where they weren't able, that's right. I remember mm -hmm. the big old spittoon yeah. there. He kept, she didn't keep a spittoon by her chair, though, did she? No. Mm -hmm. if she, I don't, she, she, she didn't sit down and dip. She had to be up moving around, didn't she? <laughs> she, she, she died did. in 1972, wasn't it? Yeah. Hollis died in 71, in February, I believe it was. That was a bad, bad back-to-back -back thing, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I had Hollis and Mama, 71, 72, and Dad in 76. Then I had, I had already had a heart attack in 74, and then Olene died in 82. I hit it pretty rough, Jeff. Yeah. And, uh, but it was, it, it, that's, that's just you part were, of life. You, you wasn't, I guess, I don't say it was harder than Granny dying, but you wasn't, ex, you wasn't expecting Granddaddy, really, he wasn't sick till up right before he died. Granny no, was sick for no. about a year, and you kind of, I know I, it was kind of different when he died and when she died, because I was been expecting her to die for so long. Of course, I was a little boy, but I still... Yeah. You knew I, she was. I knew what was going on. You knew on. she was in bad shape. Granddaddy was just a. I, well, I reckon it's more of a surprise and a shock than anything else. Well, we worked. She worked on mostly down in the old warehouse in the parts building at the mill after mm -hmm. she started back to work up there, and I believe seemed to want to seem to work seven in the evening to three at night. I don't yeah. know how she did mm -hmm. that. Well, it's just a while she worked the second shift to start with. Yeah. Worked in the cloth room. 
And but she worked down in this fly room. No woman had ever worked down there. She's the first one to ever work there. I I used to go. I went over to see her a couple of times. Yeah. She was working. And, and uh, she kind of enjoyed it on that ship for some reason or another. But it made it hard on her. Yeah, I suspect and it did. We worked along there both all those years. I was working the second shift, and she'd bring my lunch at seven o'clock when she come in, mm -hmm. and uh, I would I would go eat my lunch. I'd wait till then. She'd bring me a good warm lunch. Did you ever Did you ever own a tractor while you lived out here? Own a tractor. Uh huh. No, Daddy did. That old uh, that old cub. I remember yeah. that. You used it to work your garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And work his too. Yeah. And uh, we used it to mow with. Yeah, I remember the mower underneath. Yeah. Yeah. You had what, about four acres to mow, didn't you? Well, I'm mowing three now. I expect I'm mowing more right now than I ever mowed. I yeah. mean, regular. Yeah, you had that big field down there, but it, it just don't ever seem, I don't remember it really growing up real high. It stayed kind of low, didn't it? What, here in the front? Yeah. Here? I mowed it all the time. But it never, it didn't grow high though, tall though, did it? Kind of grass. I don't ever remember it really getting all that tall. No, oh, it's center feet. It didn't get high. Yeah. No, it wouldn't grow high. But we kept that mode down there. Yeah. Of course, you don't remember. I I, I worked the field here in front of the house for about an acre in corn and peas and things for the when they built. See, they built the road and got the better part of that field. Yeah. And I quit working it and made it into a yard. That's always been grass, as long as I can remember. Yeah, but I I used to fly it after I lived here. I, I never, remember the boy. I never forget. I put old sprinkle, old uh, uh, purple hull peas, mm -hmm. and uh, they made a pile of them. And we put up eat them. And they wasn't really good. Yeah. But uh, we put up fifty quarts of those things, and we had four out most of them. We wouldn't eat them. They wasn't good. <laughs> they got canned. They just wasn't good. Huh. They just wasn't good. I remember you, you, you said you cut down 40, 50 trees around here. More than that, eventually I own. Yeah. I remember that big tree right out there between our house and between this house and Mama's, that big old oak, big old pine out there. Well, we had several of them. Uh, One, it, it was probably two or three feet in diameter. I, it, did yeah, it die had, or did it blow over? It blew over, didn't it? We had that double when it blew over, yeah. Yeah. I remember the double one blowing off. It just did well, that. Well, this was a solid pine orchard here when I built here. The children make, they'd make houses down in there. It wasn't, they wasn't, I mean, real thick. And it was enough they had pine straw. I mean, the pine, sage would grow up in it and they'd build houses all down in there. And one of them carried my handsaw down in there and cutting limbs and things. And I never did find that handsaw. I, after this day, I don't want to have that handsaw. <laughs> it got gone, and I, I haven't figured it out yet. It looks like I would have cleaned, have cleaned up. Well, I would have found that hand saw somewhere. I've yeah. never figured it out. Ain't no telling. Uh -uh. Uh, but yeah, the trail I noticed the other night was coming up. The trail down there is gone. Yeah. I guess there ain't enough traffic. Ain't enough little feet running. No, it's there. not that much. Uh, no children running back and forth. <laughs> We go down there once in a while, and your mother and daddy comes up, but they not. We don't always walk the same way. They don't. No. don't. We used to be. Like, daddy comes up nearly every day on his four wheeler, but he comes around over that way. Goes out to the garden and what, run. What dogs did y'all have in the 1960s? Lord Jeff, I don't know. Uh, let's see. I remember Ginger, but she y'all that was late. That was late night in the. Well, the one we had 16 years. We got. She was, it was from Pussy Top, the dog we had in, when we moved out here. When I had to go off to the service, uh -huh. she was half Cocker Spaniel. Uh -huh. we give her to Daddy. Yeah. And we wouldn't take her back when we come out here. And she had a bunch of puppies. And we got one called Ted. I don't uh -huh. know if you, I mean, no, not Ted. Uh, mm, oh, goodness. Scooter Bill? Scooter Bill, yeah. Old Scooter Bill. Uh, I've heard of him all my life, but he was gone for I Well, he lived, he got him when Bradley was two years old when we moved out here. And then a little while after we got him, he was born and we got him. And he lived to Bradley was in his eight, already, I believe, started to call him. Anyway, 16 years. 
He was 16 years old and he just died a natural death out there in the yard. <laughs> I, I remember Uncle Bradley being in, in, in college. Aunt Nan was already gone, obviously. She had kids. I remember Uncle Brad being in college. I remember Granny, every Friday when Uncle Bradley was coming home, making a cake. Oh, yeah. She, so I'd always find my way up she, here. She'd cook things for him and he'd carry it back with him, a lot of it back with him to Troy to eat. Y'all got out here, you and Uncle Bradley got out there one time in the shed and uh, painted his Volkswagen, if I remember correctly. Probably did. It we painted blue. something in it, I forgot which one it was. Yeah. But it was before I made a shop out of that part. I remember when you was out there uh, putting uh, putting concrete floor down, I like to got you in trouble. You know, I done that thing with a trowel and never leveled it. You can go out there and put a level on it now and it's level. I done I, it by my eye. I, uh, yeah, I was out there watching it. And you were rolling that stuff. I was about four or five years old, I guess, be about 1968, 69. I, 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 I stared at that mess in the thing. And you said, uh, it had rolled a big old roll. And you said, you know what that looks like? I said, no. He said, that look, you said, that looks like a turd. <laughs> and I didn't know what it was. I mean, you asked me, you know what a turd is? I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, it's a big, you said, it's a big, long dookie. Well, I immediately had to go in there and tell Mama that. Mama yeah. was in here, her and Granny was in here cooking, <laughs> doing something. I don't know. They were in the kitchen. And I come in there telling her that. She won't know who told me that. <laughs> I said, Granddad. <laughs> she laughed. Granny laughed. But I don't, I don't, I don't think she ever said anything to you about it, but I didn't know. I didn't know what it was, but I, yeah, I remember you out there spreading that stuff out. Yeah, it, uh, that was a pretty good job, but you know, it messed still right there, all right. Mm -hmm. It's got one little crack in it, I think, but not big enough. Well, what concrete there. ain't going to crack? Huh? There ain't much concrete that ain't going to crack. No, well, I didn't put anything in to keep it from it. Yeah. Yeah, but I've had a good floor there, but it didn't cost me much to build. That was in the late 60s, you put all that down and finished that other side up. Because I remember you could come in on this side, and you had a half ceiling in it, I believe. And you, you put stuff on it and use that for storage, yeah. too. Well, I got a hole in it. It's a lot of stuff up in there now. But uh, it's too low for a shop. And I don't know the reason it is. It's, yeah. it's too low, too little. Your car house. Yeah. When you, the tin came off of the barn down there at the big house, didn't it? Yeah, you know, for the that shed, yeah. yeah well, mm -hmm. That barn burned or did y'all tear it down? No, it didn't come off the barn, it came off the top of the house. Oh, okay. Daddy, it had a tin top on it. Okay. And uh, he put a roofing on it. All right. Yeah, it, that's where it come from. And all them wide boards out of there came from off the top of that house when he, he put it on it, put new decking on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I built that 24 by 12 for a dollar and eighty. Five, 83 cents, I believe it was. <laughs> Nothing but nails, it's all I bought. <laughs> I skinned the pole down here with my bayonet I got in Japan. and Yeah, the one is still here. And the rafters and everything, and put up cedar, cedar poles for the corner. I don't believe you could do that now. There ain't, any, ain't enough cedar trees to cut, are there? No, they're not. They got a bunch of disease in them. Uh, when we come here, this whole place was covered. They had some back at Daddy's house there, 15, 60, 65, 70 feet tall. Big logs, big trees. I remember a good many of them. We had a little... All over the place. I, I remember. It used to, you could go out in the woods and cut your cedar tree down for Christmas. I, you can't do that much anymore. No. Mm -hmm. No. Well, trees grew up over them and all, and not many fence rows anymore. You know, the birds will tear them and put them in the fence rows. Yeah. Eat those little blue balls off of them. That's the seed, and they'll go sit on the fences and things. And cedars will come up in the fence rows yeah. and around the corners and things. That's where you see cedars come up in all kinds of places like that. But uh, we worked, me and uh, Granny worked, Colleen worked uh, in the mill there and went back and forth. And, until 1979. We retired and, and we retired both at 62. When did y'all, did y'all, y'all didn't retire, she retired before you did, didn't she? About two months, yeah. She retired in March and I retired in the last of May. I remember you, I remember when you retired because you, 
in the last year or so, you just look like walking death. I remember you just looked so yeah. bad. I was worried that you were even going to make it to retirement. I just remember you coming in that back door. Looked like you'd been on a 100-mile run. Yeah. And then she it was six, very months, hard. six months after you retired, you were you was a whole different man. You looked uh, yeah, it, color it, to your cheeks. It, and, it was very hard. But you know, after I retired, I worked part-time now, over two years then. Yeah, but you never been wearing yourself out. I didn't work, with, I told him when I started with, I was not working but four hours at any time. And that's all I'd work for him was four hours. You know, and I did not run a regular job for him either. Mm -hmm. I done. I went in and done, uh, he'd have numbers of looms that they'd have a problem with and want me to go and fix them. Yeah. And he'd give me a list of them and that's what I'd done. Yeah. You know, next year, next June, will be Mom and Daddy's 40th wedding anniversary. Yeah. I remember well your 40th wedding anniversary. Yeah. South Southside. Yeah. I remember yep. they, they fooled you and Granny so good. What year was that? Oh. Huh. <laughs> it would have to been 1960. No. No. 70. It was later than that. I was in high school. Mm. 1980? Y'all married in 40. We're married in 40, yeah. It would have been 80. I don't know what I'm thinking about, Jeff. I remember that well, because... Uh, we married in July 40. We were afraid. Yeah, it was July 1980. I was just finished 11th grade, about to go into the 12th grade. Yeah. Because uh, we was afraid y'all was going to catch on, because Granny came out of the driveway. About time ain't Betty pulled in or pulled out of Mama's driveway. The only thing that saved us was the fact that the car she drove was a silver bottle. At that time, Mom and Daddy were driving a silver bottle, but hers was a four-door. I mean, two-door, Mom and Daddy's was a four-door. Granny didn't catch that it wasn't Mama. Yeah, but I went down there, and they were fixing a lot of that stuff. Did you know what was going on? No, your mother, she lied to me. <laughs> your own daughter lied to me. about fixing it for Bonnie and uh, I don't know what all she told me they were doing. Yeah. And, uh, but when we, Evan carried us up there, we said we was going to go out to eat. Yeah. And we went on over to Southside. And what was the excuse for going to Southside? Well, none. She just was just taking off over there. Over in a big crowd. I thought, Evan, we don't need to be stopping here. <laughs> she, she drove up in there. I knew then what had happened, <laughs> but you know Olene hadn't caught on to it then. I, I turned around to her and said, Olene, we done been had. <laughs> and uh, it took her a little bit to realize what was going on. She was getting out of that car, straightening her dress up. Yeah, it was a mess. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be that long though before she'd be sick. Yeah, that, had was, no idea. that was... We had retired in, in, that year, in 79 and that was 80 and retired a little over a year. And uh, I had no idea that that was coming up. I thought it would be me, not her. Oh, well, I didn't think it'd be either one of you. You want to know the truth? I figured, well, I, figured she, I, was, I figured I was set for grandparents for at least another 20 years. She was She was always so healthy and not having no problems. But you just can't tell, Jeff. Yeah. It's just one of those things. She, uh, I, I was in college. I'd gone to start a school and Joe and Steve came over and told me what, what they'd found and what was going on. And you know, I, I was hoping and praying I'd have her at least another year or two, at least, and we didn't quite make it even nine months, did we? No, not after I found it. Found it in uh, September of 81, and she died in April of 82. April 25th. You, yep. remember, you remember where you and I were? Yeah, I know where I was when she died. You were sitting in your recliner up there. No, I had laid down on the bed just I for a little bit. I thought you were in the room with me. No, I'd come up in this front room and lay down on the bed. I knew it was coming and I just went in there and lay down and it wasn't long for. I was lying there on that, on that couch and I heard, I just was asleep and I heard Mama say, well, she's gone. And I, I mean, I woke up just as she said that. Yeah. It, just, it was like, I don't know. Well, it was, I hate to see her go, Jeff, but it was, it was, she had to go. It was good, it was better. But she wasn't suffering that much. We carried her Montgomery 
and had all the nerves stripped back in the back of her neck. Cord Island. Yeah, and she, she, she wasn't suffering all that bad. But that, that, was, that was probably the hardest thing you ever faced in your life. Oh gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very hard. And well, after you live with somebody four to three years, it's not easy. No, it ain't. It wasn't easy at all. And well, it's just like you're the bottom dropping out. I and, think the hardest part of it is just not having her there to talk to, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. See, we had retired and was together you know, about all times. So Y'all been good friends all your life. Oh, then. gosh, yeah. And uh, it, was, it wasn't easy. I wouldn't can't tell imagine. anybody it was easy. I can't imagine. But your mother and CB come up a good bit. Virginia. Well, Virginia didn't come up very much. CB did, though. He come up nearly every day. I thought, uh, I thought Aunt Jenny helped look after her son, too. Oh, are you talking about when they're sick? Yeah. I was talking about after she died. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was talking about how hard it was after, after she died. Well, I remember talking with you afterwards. I didn't come, come up every day, but I was at yeah. home during a lot yeah. of that time because I was yeah. sick. Well, everybody was good about it, could. But it ain't the same going to bed oh, by gosh, yourself. Oh, gosh, you, you hear it not to go to bed by yourself. <laughs> and... Uh, but I made it read it better than I thought I was going to make it. I, I, I guess I did. I, I thought I did anyway. But I wouldn't tell anybody it was easy. Mm -hmm. And you know it would be just as hard now if I lost Mary. I know it would be. Yeah. I know it would be. Y'all been married. Y'all married in 80, February 12th, 1982. Mm-hmm. 83. 83. That's right. Granny died in 82. Yeah. So you know, 15 years this past February. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming up on 16 years, and it don't seem like it at all. Well, if y'all had, how long was she married to Mr. Jim Mack? 38 years. So 38 and 43 is 81, and 12 is 93. So together, y'all all together been married 93 years. Yeah. Then, hadn't you? <laughs> yeah. She didn't, she didn't marry all that. Long after I married, even she is that much younger. Yeah. I married forty, and she married forty-three. But she was without Mr. Jetmack for a long time. No, right? two and a half years. I thought it longer than that. No, no. Hmm. He died in eighty. Okay. And Olene died in eighty-two. Well, I remember you telling me you were going out with somebody, but you wouldn't tell me who it was. No. I didn't push you. I didn't, I didn't care. Well, Jeff, I'm going to be honest with you. didn't want me to know, I wasn't going to push you. That was one of the hardest things i ever done. Really, I'm not joking you. Well, uh, I know. I've talked to you a long time, several uh, times about it. After, after you, I lost your granny, I knew I needed to do something and not just sit around here and hold my hands and fiddle around all the time. But... Four to three years, not quite four to three years, but yet from like from April to July, yeah. being four to three years, it's a long time to be with somebody, and then <coughs> get out and call yourself sweetheart and are going with somebody else. That ain't that's not easy. No, yeah, I, and I'm, I, I've been married twelve years, and it wouldn't be easy for you then. No, I wouldn't. I think about it. I don't, want, no. don't really want you to. You really got food. used to Laura now. It'd be hard to get used to somebody don't else. Don't want to fool with it. Nope. And uh, when did y'all, when did you and Miss Mary first go out? The last week in October of, uh, 90, of uh, 82. Uh, Where'd y'all go on your first day? We went to Montgomery and eat at, uh, what was that place called? They stay out there very long in Normandale. Doves? Or so I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of it. It's eating place. Yeah. Uh, it was Doves, wasn't it? Duffs. Duff. D U F F. Yeah, Duff. 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 I knew it was started with a D. We went there. It hadn't been opened up long, and I didn't know where to go. And I just. <laughs> <laughs> they can see changed a little bit in 40, yeah, 40, 40 yeah. years, 43 years, hasn't it? Yeah, we, uh, I didn't go with Mary to get married, Jeff. I really didn't. I just, well, your mother and Nana both told me I need to get out and find somebody to go and eat with and have a good time. And, uh, 
I didn't, I, I couldn't think of anybody I wanted to go with. I, I could not. Uh, there's a lot of good women, but you know there's difference in good women and somebody you want to be with. Oh yeah, I know that. And uh, there was one other woman I thought of, but she was already going some with a fella, and I didn't want to bother with her. But I liked her. Yeah. Now, I don't mind telling you who it was, but I never did ask her. It was Jill, uh, married Johnny Salter. Uh, well, you don't know her, but anyway, she was Jill. She was a Newton, and she married Plaster Perry Jr. Uh -huh. And they didn't have any children. They lived over here on my mail route. And I went to school with her, and she used to play basketball. I, I always thought a lot of her, and she was a good woman. When you were thinking about women to go out with, did you think, were you looking more pointedly at having, going out with a woman that didn't have any children? Not necessarily. Uh, it was a good thing, yeah. yeah. It was a good thing, I thought. Yeah. It would give that woman children and yeah. things. But that really wasn't, wasn't, one I did, that wasn't if I found somebody else that I wanted to go with their children, it wouldn't have made that much difference. Well, when did you decide you wanted to ask Miss Mary to marry you? Well, I'm going to tell you just how the thing happened, Jeff. Uh, I had thought about it after the children mentioned it to me, and then I, I even, in Deacon's meeting one day, I asked those Deacons to pray about it for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mary had had a lot of sickness right along then. Yeah, I remember. Long, pro long problems. And she wasn't coming to church much and didn't work a whole lot long then. And I had never even given Mary a thought, not one, one little bit of thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I kept, I mean, we had kept up with her in our class because Lucille, mm, I can't call her last name now, lived on down below, her, was in my class. Mm -hmm. And she would tell us how Mary was getting along. And uh, the, the man run the meat market down there at Baptist Market, Jetty Cheatham store. And he later run the store itself. I can't call his name now. But anyway, uh, I went over to Superfoods one night to get me some groceries about dark. And I bought my groceries and was coming out, getting through the pay, and I turned around and there stood Mary. Hadn't seen her in a long time. And I spoke to her and said just a few words. She don't even remember. <laughs> and uh, I came out and I said, well, you know what? That's the person I'm going to ask out. It just, just that way. I remember you saying she reminded you a lot of Granny. Oh, I guess so. I but anyway, I, I knew Mary. I knew she was a good person. And I knew Jim Mack was dead. And I just said, well, that's, that's if I'm going to go with everybody, that's who I'm going to ask. And I sat there and watched her come out and put her groceries in this you know, People put the groceries in the car and left. I come on home. That was the first part of the week, or uh, on the weekend, I, I guess. And it was Thursday of the next week before I could get up enough there to call. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> and uh, it was, I called her, and Jim Mack had been dead two years and something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> She had not been out with anybody. But she told me she'd go out with me. I don't know what I'd done if she had <laughs> Well, you don't want to think, even think about it. Yeah, that. no. But anyway, she uh, she said she'd go out with me. So that's when we started. And it wasn't very long before I knew I was going to want to marry her. But I didn't start with that in mind. I really didn't. Where'd you buy a ring? At uh, Johnny Tyson. Julie. And she bought mine there. Did you buy, you buy her an engagement ring? Huh? Did you buy her an engagement ring? No, I just bought her a wedding ring. Okay. But we've had her another ring fixed since then. Taking it 
and her ring that uh, she had Jim back and gave her mm -hmm. and put them together. Have you noticed it, mm -hmm. it's doubled? And, and bought a whole new ring and put those sets in it. Well, the stone from Granny's? Uh, the stone from Granny's ring? No. Oh. No, no. for Mary's one, Jim back and gave Mary. Oh, okay. No, Granny's ring's in yonder in the safe. No, I wouldn't have done that. I, I didn't know. I, no, uh, uh, no. Mm -mm. No, it's it's one I bought her and one Jim back bought her. Okay. And uh, put them together. It's a nice ring. It's, well, I think. You mm -hmm. couldn't have picked a better woman as far as I think the whole family is concerned. She's been good to us and good to you. And, uh, Jeff, I, I could have never done no better, I don't think. You hit, you hit home runs both times, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> home runs. And I, I got them there about, what, about two or three blocks apart. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, I went with Daddy all over Butler and Crenshaw County. When I used to drive farm for you and Mary and all men of girls, I had a choice of, I guess, or I, I thought I did anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask them. <laughs> I mean, in, in my mind, you know. <laughs> I don't know what they would have told me, but. And some nice girls. But, uh, and I went with your granny. Boy, I finished high school a little bit. But I knew I didn't have the money. Yeah. To go regular and didn't have a way to go, so I just had to quit going with her. I mean, we, I sat with her and we went out a little bit, not much. And it was just one of those things. All right. How, how would you, uh, how would you sum up your life? What your, what your accomplishments are? How, how would you describe yourself and what you've been able to do in your life? Well, I'd like to start off, Jeff, with when, when I was a little boy. Uh -huh. And say that I I don't think any any child had a much happier happier life than I did, and a very varied life as I grew up. Grew up. I lived down in Florida. I can remember just can't remember moving down to Florida when I was two years old, mm -hmm. and uh, we stayed down there three years. I was five years old when I came back, and I got to enjoy. I enjoyed living down there. I came back to Alabama. And moved out east of town there where my mother and daddy grew up. And I uh, had a bunch of young boys, I think it all together, that living right around me it was 15 of them. Mm. And we had wonderful, we had a wonderful time playing touch football and shooting rabbits with slingshots and going to the old watch holes in the creeks down there and fishing at night. And, all the kind of stuff like that. I, I, I had a good time growing up. Fifteen years old when I left there and went out to Liberty. Lived there three years and got to know a bunch of people out there. I went to school at many different schools. Midway two different times. Horn Orville, Newton, and uh, Greenville. And got to know a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. And I got to know a lot of people going around my father from uh, I don't know how many churches all together. I've never counted up. He had nine at one time. Yeah, I do that. But I can't, I don't really know how many pastors right now. I could count them up if I had time. But anyway, I got to know a lot of people like that. I was kind of a bashful boy when I was young mm -hmm. and kind of a reserved person to help myself back some. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I must have got that from mother. I didn't get it from daddy. But... <laughs> But anyway, uh, I enjoyed all that. I reckon one of the hardest years I ever had uh, before I started losing some of my members of my family was the year I got out of high school. Uh, I uh, come out of high school and had been sitting up and wasn't feeling too good and had to start plowing a mule out in the uh, fields had 50 acres here, and a oh, colored boy quit and had to help Hollis finish plowing all that. And I started in the first of June, and by the time we picked cotton, I was uh, six foot two and a half inches tall and weighed 144 pounds. I lost so much. I wasn't nothing but skin and bones. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I had I had a hard time, mm -hmm. 
that sun and all not used to it and plowing hard and picking cotton and all that it like to got me but how how do you want people to do, how do you want people to remember you as I want, I want people to remember me that I I I know I am an honest person <laughs> yeah I can't argue that uh, I know that uh, I would like to be thought of as a person that enjoyed being with people. Mm -hmm. uh, I do enjoy being with people. I don't know how people enjoy being with me, but I enjoy being with people. That's what makes me want to camp so much. I get to meet a lot of new people and enjoy meeting I, people from everywhere. i tell you how I usually describe you. One of the things I say about you, I say he, he, he is the Christian that he says that he is. That you're who you are seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Well, I appreciate that. That's, uh -huh. I, that's how I generally describe you. you. You're who you say you are. You ain't one thing one day and something else the next. Nope. No, I don't, I don't think of myself. Well, I, I just taught Sunday school class today. I don't normally teach one. I'm a substitute teacher, and I don't teach every Sunday. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the main things that I have always tried to teach him in Sunday school, that uh, <clears throat> we need to live every day what we say we are. Mm -hmm. and Another thing I, I say, too, is, uh, I, 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 guess I'm getting, well, I guess I'm getting like you. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would like to think of myself that one that, uh, loves my family. Yeah, that's that's very evident. Very evident. Uh, I watch and I, and, I, and, I, and I listen to your daughters picking at you, giving you a hard time, but I, but I see you grinning well, at it the whole time, and know that you is <laughs> just well, that, that's the game with you. So that that's that's their way of uh, telling me they love me. Oh yeah. Well, I played with my children, Jeff, a lot. When mm -hmm. Even if I didn't have time, I'd take time. Yeah, I, I can say that about my parents. They, uh, they had a lot going on, and, but they still spent time, and that's the most important thing you've got. Can you get anything else you lose back, but you can't get time back. No. I, I moved out here. I was only one out of the six children that moved back out here. Daddy told us he'd give us each two acres of land if we wanted to move back out here. And I was the only one taking him up on it. And I'm real proud that I did because I, he was a big help to me and I was a big help to him. Especially after he got older. I mean, Mom and Daddy was lonesome out here after all the children left. And I imagine they were. Of course, they had all left. When I moved out here, you realize there's two at home when I moved yeah, back out Jenny and Uncle Graham. Yeah, Graham left that year that I moved out here. Stayed gone 49 years and just moved back. He, he left in 49 and come back in 98. Would, and, you, would, you, would you say that you and your father were good friends most of your life? Oh, yes. Yeah. I never had a falling out with him in my life. Yeah. Not one. He never done but one thing in my life after I got, and I can remember that I didn't think he treated me just right. Mm -hmm. I can be honest about it. And uh, in his thinking, I'm sure he did, because I think I've done a little bit wrong too in that in one instance. But uh, me and Daddy got along real good, and I. I done a lot for him before I left home. I drove for him, mm -hmm. went with him to churches and things, and drove for him time and time and time again. On muddy roads, he'd be give out, and I'd go drive for him. And uh, if he, he were alive today, what would you want to tell him? Oh, what would you? What would be you be most proud of showing him then, or telling? Well, I'd be proud of him teaching me what he did, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would tell him that he was a good father. Yeah. 
I think we've been fortunate, both of us have been fortunate in that regard. And yep. I think my mother was fortunate in that regard with you. And, and of course, Granny too. And, oh, yeah. Uh, we, we've been, I guess the good Lord has blessed us in many ways. That's one of the more important. I was trying to tell my Sunday school class today that, uh, you, you know, how, what do you learn most from your parents? How do you learn most from your parents? I was, you know, getting at, do you learn by them telling you or them by them living it, doing what they do? Living is the way. It ain't just the telling, no. You, got you know, I wouldn't have never married your granny. I thought a lot of her when we went to high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, when I was in high school, she was working. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, she was one of twelve children. Mm -hmm. And when I married her, there wasn't any of them going to church. Nothing. She was the only one that she had joined the Christian church up town there. Mm -hmm. But when they put up Southside down there, she she come and joined Southside Church. Reckon, reckon why she out of all of them? Just Look, several of them joined after them, but they followed her. Yeah. And but her parents, her parents weren't going big mom. No, they didn't belong to church. Daddy, daddy baptized both of them. Sure did, did they start going after they got older? Yeah, yeah. They weren't going. Miss Cone joined, then Mr. Cone joined a while later. But they had never been to church. So they Granny is the one that set the she set the compass straight and had the family move in the right direction. And yeah. Mm -hmm. She directed a lot of families in, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. Sure did. Her, did. Did all of her Uncle Bob stayed in church, didn't he? Yeah. And Uncle Uncle Hubert. Yeah, Hubert Hubert went to church a lot. Uh, I yeah. don't know about the rest of them. I guess they did. Well, I don't know. I I think. Uh, Mike, I mean, Spat did, and it him and Margie. And of course, Edna, Edna did too. Edna went to Highland Avenue. And uh, there was a lot of them started going to church then. But uh, it, that was a big, I mean, I, I knew she had to be a strong, real, strong, <laughs> strong person. You ever thought about it? She worked seven years before we married and gave practically all her money to her daddy. She was 23, 23 years old when we married. How many children would do that? Not too many. Yeah. Not too uh, many. Well, I mean, he really was able to work. He just, he wasn't going to work unless he could get what he, he kind of wanted. He got him a job after all his kids got out, didn't he? Yeah, well, he got a job after I married Olene. He had kids at home, but he got to go back to them. What advice do you have for me or the rest of the family? Well, Jeff, I would say I know you're a Christian, mm -hmm. and I know that it's sometimes hard to do, but to live an honest, upright, moral life, of course, some people can live a moral life and not be a Christian, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I would say to watch for the devil every way you turn, because he's going to get you, try to get you one way or the other. I know that. I done been along there, and I know he will. Yeah. And uh, if you do that and depend on him, the rest will be taken care of. It may not be like you want it. Yeah. But that's one thing, it ain't always, you don't always get what you want. No, it may not be like you want it, but it'll be taken care of. The only time you get what you want is when you're a little bitty baby. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, I'll tell you what, the best thing for you will be, it will be, you may not think at the time that it'll be the best, but it is. What's that? Yeah, I'm talking about whatever comes, oh. Will, oh, yeah. if you'll depend on him. Whatever comes would be the best uh, in the long run for you, but you can't see it sometimes. I couldn't. What's the old saying? Hard times make strong people and soft yeah. times make weak people. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what's wrong with our country today. We've got that's things too easy. too easy, Jeff. We have. Way too easy. Uh, if, it hit, if it hits again like it did in 1929, I don't know what in the world's going to happen. 
be just like it was then, I guess. Yeah. People killing themselves all over the country. It was a mess. Well, I want this change change gears a little bit. Okay. Uh, talk about your uncles and your ancestors, people that you knew were old when you were a little boy, like uh, like your uncles. I think we talked about your grandfather. How about granddaddy's brothers and sisters? What do you or or, or even granddaddy's uncles? Do you remember his uncles or granny's uncles? Uh, I can do all of them. I'm the only one in the family that can. <laughs> I truthfully can say I knew them well. Mm -hmm. Every one of Daddy's uncles. Who, what, who were on, they? Uh, on his Daddy's side. Uh -huh. Grandpa Mullins, his yeah. brothers. I knew every one of them and I knew them well. well what can good. you tell us about them? What, did, what were they like? Well, Uncle Bob, Robert Mullins, Lived just beyond Chapel Hill on the nicest farm in Oregon, Crenshaw County. Mm -hmm. He was a member and a regular member till he died at Chapel Hill Church. Uh -huh. He married Belle Campbell, I believe her name was. I bet you he, my daddy's folks for Campbell's. I wonder if I saw It could be some of the same ones. I'll have to look at uh, that. Belle Campbell, and uh, they didn't have any children. What did he look like? Tall, slender man. Did he look like what we think a Mullins looked like? Yes, he sure did. Mm -hmm. Did he yeah. have hair? Some of them didn't, but Uncle Bob did. Did he have hair? Yeah, he had hair. When we say Mullins, did he look like little granddaddy? Uh, sort of. Sort of, but more like Uncle Herman. You remember Uncle, yeah, Uncle Herman? I remember Uncle Herman. But more like Uncle Herman. Yeah, he had full head of hair. Was black yeah, he had, yeah, he, yeah, all of them had hair. Uh, and... Uh, Uncle George lived right south of Chapel Hill where the old Mullins place. You've probably been there. I've been there a long time ago. Yeah, he had a son, Bertie, there. He's dead now, though. Yeah. Bertie was two years older than me. And uh, <clears throat> Uncle George raised a good large family, but he didn't uh, He didn't go to church much. Mm -hmm. it, Bertie and myself joined the church the same week except at Chapel Hill. And a lot of his children joined the church. He married a black. Mm -hmm. But Uncle George never did go to church all that much. Who was your Who was your daddy closest to in his family? You remember? Well, probably Uncle Jack, the baby boy. Yeah. Uncle Jack was two years older than Daddy. Mm -hmm. Is all. They were nearly about the same age, and he lived. He died the same year Daddy did. No, he was one year older than Daddy, not two. That's he, that's that's his uncle, right? Uh huh. He's a baby of the, all the Mullins boys. There was Uncle, Uncle Bob and Uncle George and Uncle Tom and Uncle Jack. Mm -hmm. And there's another one I think died when he was young and I didn't know. Uh, uh, a woman at work who's also related, or you where I used to work, is also related to the Mullins. Her, mother, her grandmother was the Mullins. She remembers uh, your Uncle Jack. Or my uncle Jack too. She remembers him going to see him when she was a little bitty boy, a little bitty girl. Oh. He said he was a uh, he was dressed in black. He wore wearing a black suit. He said he just looked real severe, but after she got to know him, he was a pretty good old fella. Yeah. Uncle Jack lived down in Florida. Yeah, she remembers seeing him. Yeah. What about granddaddy's sisters? Daddy's sisters. I mean granddaddy's aunts, uh, Well now I never knew one of, but one of those real good. Her name was Narcissus. Uh, ain't sis. Ain't sis. I knew her well. She married twice. Her first husband uh, was Owens, and he ran off and left her with one little girl. And she married again, married Rich Raven the second time, and they had two daughters, Inez and Olene. What kind of personality she had? She was she was a sweet girl, a sweet woman. I, I liked ain't sis. I really did. I didn't know the others very well. Leela, Leela married uh, Albert Williams, and they moved away from here. And uh, that was that's my woman at work's grandmother. It was. Yeah. Her her husband lived to be a hundred years old at all. Yeah. Yeah. And and we ha and there was another one of those girls married at Owens. Yeah. I forget her name, but anyway. 
read it so far as the daughters, the girls, I didn't really know any of them very well at all. I remember seeing them a time or two, but ain't, ain't sisters on when I really knew well. Which of, you, which of your family did you know the best as far as cousins and whatever? Who did you run around with the most or see the most? Felt well, you know, I didn't have any first cousins close to us. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, they were younger and grew up out there at Midway, too, did. Yeah. But they were so much younger than me until, uh, and that's Hubert and Charles Head. Yeah. Okay, it's, uh, but they were so much younger than me to like, I, I guess you'd say I'm closer to them yeah. in, in some respects. But I grew up with uh, Uncle Ain't Florence and Uncle Will's children down in Florida till I was five years old. Yeah. And then we visited a good bit down at Pensacola with them. But I never did live right around any of my cousins that much, except Hubert and Charles, and they were so much younger yeah. until we didn't have that much in common long, you know, as I grew up. I guess so it's I can't. Like some of my younger cousins, they're, they're my cousins, but I don't really know them that yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I, don't, I can't say that, that I did. But you know, a lot of my cousins is gone now. Yeah. They're not living. <laughs> Some what, of them anyway. What about Granny's brothers and sisters and aunts and uncle? What? Well, she, Granny didn't have any sisters. That's right. She had two brothers. That's had right. two brothers. Now, I knew all of her, her uncles on her, on her mother's side <coughs> and most of them on her daddy's side. And did okay. any of them fight the Civil War, you remember? No, they weren't old enough. Yeah, I guess that's right. She no. born, they'd been born in 1870s. That's right. Yeah, they weren't old enough. Uh, Daddy's two grandfathers fought in the Civil War. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, but uh, I don't, I can't say I know of anybody on Mama's side of my idea that was close to fought in the Civil War. Uh, John A. Phelps probably might not have been old enough. I don't, I don't think he was. He could he, have been. I think he was born in 68 or 69. I'll have to. Well, Granny was born, what, in 80 something, wasn't she? Yeah. Uh, or what? She, Let's see. She died in 63 and she was 86, like one month being 87. Take 86 from 63. She born in, in the 1880s. Well, I thought. <coughs> so, Grandpa, if she was born when he was 20 some years old, he was born in probably the late 50s. Early 60s, he, he couldn't have fought in the Civil War either. <coughs> but old man Thomas Jefferson Mullins fought in the Civil War. He born and, uh, David Tindall fought in the Civil War. Yeah. But Granny was born the next year after the war was over. She was born in 66. Yeah. Now I knew uh, most of Granny, I mean, I knew Granny's brothers and sisters. Granny Mullins, she was a Tindall. Yeah. I knew, I never did know Tone very well. He died when I was very small. I knew Uncle Dallas some. I remember when he was, he, I was pretty small when he died. One of the first funerals I went to after we moved back to Alabama. I didn't know John Tyndall that well. I, know all of, I knew all of his children. But, uh, and I knew Charlie Tyndall I, I didn't know. I didn't know his dad. Tone was Charlie's daddy. Uncle Bob Tyndall never did marry. He was Granny's brother. He he was born uh, more or less a I don't know just a kind of simple minded mm -hmm. or something. I don't know just what. What were we talking about? Talk about one Grand of your Granny's uncles. I think it was simple minded. Well. Uh, my grandmother had three brothers uh, on Mama's side, Mama's mother, and uh, they didn't. None of them live to be all that old. Uh, had Johnny mm -hmm. after his daddy, I imagine Johnny Phelps. We called him Johnny, and Marion and Irby Phelps. These three boys. Uncle Johnny had. Let's see, he had five children. Two of them's a living. 
Uncle Marion had 14. As far as I know, there's two of them living. Mm -hmm. I can't swear to that. I know two of Uncle Johnny's are living. Uncle Irby had 10, I believe it was. And I think four of those are dead. I think there's six of those still there, and I'm not sure. With all of all of these, uh, all of your aunts, uh, uncles, rather, all of them farmers, any of them do anything other than farm? No, they was farmers. Uncle Irby, they all had land their father gave them. <coughs> he had enough land to give them all 60 and 80 acres of land. Alexander Hamilton Phelps. Terrell uh, Phelps. Yeah, he come from Terrell Phelps, yeah. yeah we've got his uh, state settlement. Mom has his, has his state settlement. Yeah. You see, here's one one odd thing about Uncle Irby's family. He was Mama's uncle. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm older than any children he had. I, I'm older than his oldest. Huh. And I'm Mama's second child. Was he born late in life? Nope, he married late in life. Ah. <laughs> he was, I don't know, maybe somewhere between 35 and 40 when he married, I think. And he's on up in his thirties anyway. Married a woman a good bit younger than him. And anyway, I had just died the first part of this year. And I think I was six months older than her. And all the rest of them was younger than her. That and I think Uncle Marion's got two daughters uh living or did a lifetime now and you one of them's over in Rutledge. And I think the other lived down around McKenzie somewhere, if she's still living. And that's about all I can... I live right there next to those 14, though, part of the time. Grew up with them. Which, <laughs> which, ones were you, which one were you closest to? What was his name? You had one of the better friends? Well, all of them was older. All of Uncle Mary's children was older than me, except one. Mm -hmm. uh, Louise, one of the ones living, was a little bit older than me, not much. And uh, Belle, the baby, is dead. And Sadie, just older than Louise, lives in Rutledge. Uh, she was the prettiest of all of them to me. I know she, anyway, might not be somebody else's. <laughs> well, what's her name now? What's her last name? Sadie. They had a store over there in, in Rutledge a long time. And I can't call, I can't tell you right now. I sure can't. Can't tell, remember now who she married. Uh, she married pretty young and left there. But I, that's about all I can tell you about that, about them, I guess. Oh, I could tell you a lot more, but I mean that you, you really want to know. Well, I, no tell. Spit it out there. I don't know. <laughs> well, Daddy built a store there way back in the tw twenties where we have moved in Newton. In the corner of the road there above where Earl Phipps lived. And uh, when we got, he got ready to go to school in Newton, he sold that store to Aunt Lavinia. The mother, Uncle Marion had died, left her a, a bunch of young'uns there. And they bought that store. He left her some insurance and she bought the store. And uh, Marion, for two of her young sons that was left at home, they pretend to run the store, but of course, it didn't work out. <laughs> How long did your daddy run that store, own that store? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, probably about two years, not long. Before he decided to go into ministry then? Yeah, he was, he was preaching. Mm -hmm. And that's why he sold the store? No, yeah, to go to school in Newton, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he make a good living at that store? No, I don't know. I don't think so. How old were you at that time? Well, hmm. I was, I guess I was about seven, eight years old when he ran the store. How did the, uh, did, did they have wagons come out there and drop, you know, kind of running a route, or he had to order stuff he wanted? Uh, they, they would deliver things for him if he, he ordered he, enough. He did, he had to, oh, he had to order it though ahead of time. They didn't just show up and ask what he needed, like the bread trucks and stuff now? Oh, no. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. 
How big a store was it? Probably what big is this One room. room. What big is this room was it? Well, Jeff, it's hard for me to say being a boy. Yeah. I, it probably wasn't quite as long. It's probably about, uh, I'm going to say 12, 14 by maybe 20, 25, something like that. Have a windows in the front or? It had a door and some windows and a back door and some windows. And Pop that stove? Didn't have, yeah, I didn't have any, didn't have any side windows, best I can remember. Uh, he didn't have an ice box, I mean a refrigerator of any kind, he had to have an ice box, had to get ice delivered, keep his drinks cold, and things like that. Pickle barrel and all that kind of stuff sitting in there? Yeah. It, I remember once, <laughs> I remember one thing, he, he saw an ad in the paper. Uh, for, um, I forget how many pounds of clothing, used clothing, that he could get for a small amount of money uh -huh. out of New York somewhere up there. And he ordered that mess, uh -oh. come and bundled up. He got down here, there wasn't none of it no good much. <laughs> he got he got taken there. Mm -hmm. I remember that as a boy. Mm -hmm. Old clothes that couldn't nobody wear. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we ordered, he ordered them though. He gonna sell them in the store. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work out. <laughs> Did it? I tell you, Daddy was Daddy was easy to take. You know, he yeah. even after he got over it, but when he's young, and uh, several people take him there, he let it settle to him on credit. People that was in his church, member, big members of his church, and things like that, never did pay him. I, I could name some of them, but I'm not because it might that tape might go to somewhere that hurt somebody's feeling. Some but uh, like that. he got he got he got taken, and he probably if he hadn't sold that floor, he probably would have wound up having to shut it down later on. Probably that didn't have electricity out there in the store. Oh no! Oh, so he probably closed about dark. Oh it, yeah, he didn't run it at night. If somebody come and had to have something, he'd go up there and... How far was it from the house? Mm -hmm. Do you know where El Preps live? Well, you're going to have to go out in there and see where I grew up. I, I've been out there, but I don't know where I... I it's been so long. Do you, you don't know where Alvin Reynolds lives either. You know where you turn the Damascus Church off of Highway 10? Yeah. And go till you come to a crossroads. Uh -huh. Turn up towards where Aunt Legion lived. Uh -huh. All right, if you turn back to the right... Uh -huh. That house there on the left, right down there from that crossroad. Right there in that crossroad sitting. Like you going that way and going to turn that way, it was right across over in that corner. So the house wasn't too far away from it then? From the no, it a little bit further than from here to your mother's. What kind of heater do you have there? Him a big pot belly stove or just a little wood heater? Or? You know, I think... I. Th I forgot now what kind of heater. It was a heater in there, but I can't tell you exactly what kind it was. Well, you have to go out and open the store pretty early and build a fire after you built one yeah. at the house. And I haven't yet understood. Uh, he had to hire somebody or get somebody. Or well, Hollis got Hollis is big enough. He could kind of see after sometimes when Daddy had see Daddy had to go and preach funerals and different things. Yeah, of course he didn't preach. You know, I don't know, he may have hired Bill or Oscar Pepps to help him out some. They were about grown. But he had to have somebody run that store when he was gone. Did he sell, what, it was just a little bit of everything? Not everything, no, but, but, but I mean, he <laughs> you know how It wasn't just strictly a food store, he sold... Well, it canned stuff and dry stuff. Nails and stuff like that? Oh yeah, and... Uh, Tack. You know, horse, uh, you know, bridles and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I don't think he sold that kind of. He didn't. I don't remember him selling any kind of bridles or anything like that. He, he mostly sold uh, what you'd want inside the house. Didn't sell clothing or anything like that. No, he tried. Yeah, well, that was one venture, but that didn't work no. out. And uh, but he he just sold canned goods and dry beans and stuff like that, matches and. Uh, Tardines and coke colors and you know just mm, things like that. You didn't have as big of a variety of food back then as you got now, no way, Jeff. You had oh, cheese and 
you know, she didn't keep without ice and uh, just things like that. It, didn't I, have a lot of candy, I don't suspect, in there either, did you? He had some candy. It all melt and run in the summertime, wouldn't it? Uh, it melt and run in the summertime. Well, it depends on what kind you had. It wasn't a lot of chocolate, was it? No. And he sold cigarettes and tobacco and just stuff like that. Kerosene and gas. That's where he lost most, a lot of his money was on gasoline, selling it on a credit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I remember one fella was running the truck and hauling lumber. Got into him a pretty good little bit. Mm -hmm. I would have never thought would, but he did. <laughs> it was a uh, gasoline, what was this, a big tank out there and he'd pour up a gallon or two at a time? Or how, how, no, he had, he had a hand pump. pump. Oh, okay. Yeah, had pump. Yeah, to pump it up into that yeah. glass mm -hmm. thing and then let it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Sure did. Bet you wish you had that pump now, don't you? Yeah, it would bring some money now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Surely would. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jeff, you talk about my life. I've had a good life. And there's, they just, I've had some trials and troubles. If, it, if I know one question I was going to ask you earlier and I forgot. If you could change one thing that you've done in your life, what would you change? Is it, is Gosh, it? Jeff, uh, if I had that to go with again, I I wouldn't know no better. I'd do the same thing, probably. No, no, <laughs> nothing you change, nothing you do differently. Uh, well, I, I know personally, if I had to do over again, I think I'd study a little harder in school. Well, maybe try to fly a little straight and narrower. Hindsight's a lot different, though. Yeah. Jeff, and that's what that's reading I'm not saying I, I can't really say. Well let's say it's something I, that you would like you would like a chance to know what you know now to do differently. How does that sound? Well, yeah, I would have probably if I could have gotten more education, but it was very hard to do in the depression. Yeah. It was very hard to do. You didn't have the opportunity now. You, you didn't really, probably didn't realize the importance of it at the time either, did well, you? Well, yeah, I did. I, I, I realized that that's the reason I took out to get even my high school education. You know, not not too many. My age got a high school education. Their right school then. was where in Troy, and it was just a teacher's yeah, college. Yeah, that's all it was. There, didn't yeah. Mm -hmm. it? So near school, a man went to was probably a white man went to was probably up at Auburn or at Alabama, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You didn't have any trade schools or anything, anything like that, and uh, you didn't have to go for two years over there when I was a boy uh, to Troy to teach. Of course, you'd have to go back some this summer and catch up some. But yeah. if you had two, if you had two years out of high school, you could teach or in college. Yeah. Uh, I, if you want to know one desire I had and I couldn't do it after I married, and that sounds silly, but and I wouldn't have made any money. What's that? But you know what I really wanted to do? Uh, uh, teach math in school, high school. Well, I wouldn't say do it now, but. You yeah. It depends on where you talk, where you would teach, but uh, you could probably still do it now. I, I don't know enough about it now, Jeff. I have went so long and forgotten it. But I back know. then, back then, that would have been a problem for me. It was so easy for me. Yeah. And I, I really, I really would would have been if I could. Have, I would like to have done that. Well, why don't you? Uh, you could uh, you could get somebody to teach you some of the simpler stuff and teach uh, be a tutor or something like that. Some of these kids around here. I don't know if I could even remember enough to do that. Math has changed so much since I went to school, Jeff. Well, it's changed, but I bet it's still it's still addition and subtraction and multiplication is all still the same. Well, I shoot, they ought to be learning that time in the fifth grade. Yeah, you you probably a good first, second, third, fourth grade tutor. <laughs> Uh, just, just looking at different ways. If I had a, had a chance, it was, that, there was two things. I would have liked to have been a professional baseball player hmm. back then. Yeah, yeah. That sounds funny. But no, I, I don't either. I would have liked you to be a professional baseball player. And Jeff, I feel, fully believe that, that I was equipped when I was growing up to be an outfielder. I believe I could, if I'd had a chance, I believe I could have done that. 
but uh, I was fast, real fast. Did you ever consider going to one of the colleges and just trying out? They didn't have baseball teams, though, did they? You, you didn't have a scholarship and things like that. I didn't yet. think about that. So the, what no. you'd have had to done was got a trip up one of these, up the East Coast and try it out for one of the ball teams, wouldn't you? That's what yeah, you had that would have been the only way I... Uh, and you couldn't ever got that money together. Could you it? couldn't work your way through college then either. If you had a parent that happened to have it where they could get you through, yeah, but uh, Daddy was, he borrowed a hundred dollars just to buy this place long about the time this boy I would have went into college. I, from what I heard, I think you probably made a, made a good baseball player. Well, I bet you probably made a good football player at one of the colleges, but well, they had football scholarship. I never too. did play football. I don't know how good I could have done with it. I could play good basketball and baseball. I could hit a baseball and I could throw and I could catch. But I, I did pitch for Cersei, but I, I wouldn't have never made nothing in pitching. I just, I could pitch in these little sandlot, but I, I wouldn't have never been good enough. But I do believe I could have made a good outfielder because I could run fast. You, had, you could hit well. And hit well, yeah. But I, I couldn't have never made it. I wouldn't have never made it playing second or third base either. For, I, I, fast ground is what my go. No, I, I played, uh, <laughs> I know I played a little baseball infield until I was in eighth grade and I caught the ball on my nose on a line shot and that cured me. I went back. <laughs> Like catching after I that. played second base good a little bit and done fairly well, but I I enjoyed that field or pitching one or the other, and I couldn't have made it pitching. Back so then, catchers didn't have as good of equipment back then either. No, uh-uh. Uh, that's the two things, Jeff, I guess, I, if I could have changed what I'd done for a living, that's the two things that I probably would have done. And I don't know... Uh, I never did want to go into politics. I never did want to be in the law enforcement business. And uh, I, I I had a chance. I'd taken all oh, kind of math they had in high school, business training, business arithmetic, algebra t two years, geometry two years. And I'd taken trigonometry when I was overseas. They didn't have it up here in high school, but I'd taken it when I was in Tokyo. Uh, I I could have had I could have been a bookkeeper and a teller or anything in the bank and things up there, but they didn't pay near as much as I made over on the cotton mill. Yeah. And I and I like to get out and move too and enjoy it much better. So I didn't try to get a job downtown. I went on over there and got one. And I honestly made a better living around Greenville doing that than anything else that I could have been equipped to do, unless I could have got on the post office or the uh, power company. They would have paid me more. I know you moved off to Montgomery one time for a better job. Did you ever consider moving anywhere else? No. No. Uh, I, uh, Jeff, I, had, I would have had a good opportunity when I come back out of the service. Mm -hmm. But I'd been going home away from Olene and those two children and I didn't want to do nothing but stay at home for a while. Yeah. See, I had a diploma from uh, the service in, in, in topographical surveying, mm -hmm. and I could have went up here with the state and probably got me a pretty good job surveying roads and bridges mm -hmm. and things like that. You'd have been traveling all the time. Yeah, you? and I couldn't have stayed at home. And I did I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. I reckon I made a mistake, but I just didn't want well, to do it. You don't know. If you're happy, you ain't made a mistake. No. Uh, well, I've never regretted it. I have never regretted doing what I've done. Oh. Uh, I know a lot of people might have looked down on somebody working or wearing that old mail, but no, I, I, I was a good, honest job. And that's like I was telling my Sunday school class again this morning. There ain't no job beneath anybody. No. There's no. I no. Said, you, if you got a child hungry, you'll do whatever it takes. That was a good, honest job over there, and I was doing a service, making cloth as a service for people, and yeah. uh, I didn't, I didn't mind that whatsoever. It's I jobs know, that you may not want to do, but there's no job beneath your hard work. Ain't, ain't nobody, it's nothing, nothing wrong with hard work. 
Well, that that was hard work, but I tell you what, there's some of that some of that over there that I enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed tinkering, and I, I run a tight end machine, worked on it a good long while, yeah. and I enjoyed fixing looms very much. It wasn't so repetitious like some of the others. Some jobs in the mill get very repetitious and you get bored with it. But when you walked up to a loom over there, you never knew what you were going to have to do to one until you found, found it. Sometimes it takes you a good long while to find what it is, too. Ask him, I, I, go get back to your daddy's store. Did the door of the store even have a lock on it? Oh, yeah. It did. He had a lock in yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your house didn't have a lock, though, did it? No. no. I remember this house here, you didn't even lock this door. I don't think you could lock it till I was on up at age. Uh, yeah, you could have locked it, but I didn't know where any keys were. Yeah. The first time I started locking it was when your granny was sick in Montgomery. Yeah. That's, and and we did, too. Mom and Ed didn't lock the house till I was, I was probably in high school. Yeah, but I built it in 49, I didn't lock it till 1982. Well, 81, the fall of 81, I take it back. like this girl that works, we used to work with me, said the lock ain't gonna stop nobody but an honest person, no how. Oh, no. Go in these windows and hang in time you want to. Or you could even trip them little locks up there. I just locked it to say it was locked if somebody come in. Yeah. But uh, I knew I wasn't stopping anybody. Granddaddy, he locked his, but they didn't, you couldn't, you had, he just locked by putting those pegs in, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I never forgot how he locked that store. I think he always locked the front door and come out the back door, best I remember. But he may have had a big latch on that front door, I can't say. So put a bar across it and put a yeah, had something like a pad I don't believe he had a bar, I believe he had a big latch, I remember, but I'm not sure. But he just fashed the front one and come out the back door. What kind of sh what kind of roof did it have? A tin roof or, sh or wood shingles? Do you remember? As far as I know it was wood shingles, I don't know. Oh. Probably wasn't too many houses back then painted either, were they? Not out there where we lived. My grandfather, John A. Phipps, is, and his brother right up above him there was the only two painted houses down in that community. Hey, what color were they? Grandpa's was reddish, a light red, and the uh, other Phipps up there was, Joseph Phipps was white. Did it have what? Wood side on the side, or yeah. I mean, wasn't that? Uh, it was a log house. Grandpa's was a log house with wood siding on the outside, painted red. Huh. Lap board over on the outside, painted red. Huh. He was the only one out in that community that had a telephone and had lights in the house. You have a generator or something? No, he had carbide lights. Uh, Tank sitting outside in the house, and you put chemicals in them, and they made gas. Uh, and he had pipes. And lights all over the house. I think my my granddaddy, my great granddaddy had carbide lights. Well, Grandpa, when I was a boy, had carbide lights. Cause I remember that big old tank out there in his yard. Yeah. Grandpa had his in inside of a house, and uh, he had a store too. When my mother grew up, and after I got grown, I, I remember walking up there to his store and getting things for Mama. Well, after we come back from Florida. Yeah. And I'd go get things for him. He 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 run a store there a long I don't know how long. He run it with Mama before Mama ever married. It. And uh he wore a long beard. Did your dad ever have a beard? No. He always shaved? Yeah. I never knew him to have a beard. Mustache. Mustache and nothing. You've never had one either, have you? Yeah, I had a mustache when I was overseas. Oh, okay. In the service. The old lady wrote me and told me she didn't want me to come home with it. <laughs> and I didn't. And after I got home, she said you know, she wished I'd have kept it. Well, why'd you grow it back? <laughs> I just never did. Well, it's a lot of trouble. Yeah, I had a mustache, you remember? Yeah. I know. I grew a beard last year, a year before last, just to see what it looked like. Well, mine right now would be white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it don't show much anymore now. You always, now, you always had a heavy beard? Oh, yeah. Did your daddy have a heavy beard? Yeah, real heavy. 
Uh, I started at age 15 and shaved every day. I went to school from then on. I didn't really start having to shave every day until I was about 16 or 17. I started when I was 15 and I had to shave every day. Uh, I'd be a mess one or the other. My beard's kind of like Uncle Graham's. I have about shave twice a day sometimes if I go out at night. Well, mine used to be maybe like that. But it turned gray and it don't show. Graham's is getting to where it don't show near as much either. Yeah. What, what kind of clothes do you wear mostly as a boy? Denim, blue jeans, or? or overalls. Overalls? Yeah. Made out of denim? Yeah. Yeah. You wear it in the summertime, go without a shirt, or wear a shirt underneath? Well, most of the time without a shirt. What did you wear at church on Sundays? Well, pants and you had shirt. You had Sunday and, clothes? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, back when I was a boy growing up in my early teens, we, we wore white duck pants. Made bell bottoms like the Navy had, uh -huh. and uh, we thought we'd dressed up. We'd get a pair of those. <laughs> <laughs> is your was your daddy old enough? Yeah, I think he probably was old enough that when he was a little boy, boys wore knickers, didn't it? I imagine so, but I don't know. Well, I, I know there's a picture I'd... of Granny with her brothers, and her brothers are wearing knickers. I think. Yeah. But I can't think it. I don't think I got a picture of Daddy when he was small. I got one that was in the paper. You saw that one? That yeah, I've seen it. I don't remember what he had on, though. Probably barefooted, too, wasn't he? Probably. It may he took his shoes off about me. It seemed like all of them had coats on. Made out in the yard in front yeah. of the old house over yonder. Did you get Uncle, always get Uncle Hollis's hand-me-downs to you? Oh, no, did. we didn't get that many clothes. We'd wear them out. Uh, Most of the time, Jeff, we only got we got two pair of overalls a year. Would you wear them day after day after day? Wash them at night? Yeah. Uh, well, I we'd have some old ones to it wouldn't be more completely out where we could change. Yeah. But usually in the fall of the year, we'd get a pair of uh, overalls. And Mom would, I'd ride up the knees, crawl on them, shoot marble and things, but she'd patch them. Yeah. <laughs> and now they they want them more out. <laughs> yeah. Did you wear long underwear? Or? Yeah, Daddy bought us long underwear a good bit. It's cold. We didn't, couldn't have heated houses like we do now. And we, we wore under, long underwear with this flap back there. To, do you remember the first time you got in a tub? You're talking about a bath tub? Bath tub. No, I can't really you say. Still, you're still young, you don't remember. I was grown. Oh, you were grown? Why, well, yeah. Y'all didn't have a bathtub at all? No. There wasn't no such thing as a bathtub back then. How would you go, what, bring the water and tote it and carry it in? I don't wasn't know. Wasn't no electricity? Yeah, that's true. Uh, electricity came 1940 out here. April 1940. That was the year I married. Hmm. Um, I moved to town then and had a bathtub. I reckon that's the first time I had a bathtub. I look at that kind of like the little kids I have, like my next door neighbor's child. She's amazed that when I was a boy, we only had three channels and they were black and white. And I said, well, shoot, my granddaddy didn't even, my daddy didn't even have TV. You didn't even have electricity. No. Uh, we had to draw our water with a windlass and uh, Daddy put in a pump down there though, after we got electricity. In that well that they yeah. filled in by the garage there? Yeah, he had to dig a, but he had to get a shallow well pump. And he had to dig a hole down with the side of it and put the pump down in there because it wouldn't draw, it wouldn't, it wouldn't pull the water far enough to reach the water. And he had to go down about 10 feet, hmm. 8 or 10 foot, and put the pump in there so he could. When did he drill that old sulfur well out there? I don't know. Uh, about the time, pretty soon after we moved out here. Because he gave me the old pump out of the well, and I used it in that well out there. That old well, that old well always smelled like sulfur. It was lime, it wasn't sulfur. It stuck. I remember it used to smell so bad. It was lime. It smelled like sulfur, that's why I call well, it. Well, it, no, it's not really that much sulfur as it was lime. <laughs> 
Does it always smell that bad? Yeah. You talking about a drill well? Yeah. 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 Of course, now they ain't drilled that well. I never did drill there with that well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I didn't know till I was sewn up, probably 10, 11, 12 years old, that what the indention out there by the garage was a well. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't no good when we moved down there. Well, it was shallow. I mean, just no, it off. had not been seen after. And uh, no, it was the curving down the bottom was rotten and it was just all messed up. It had a shed over it. But uh, when we moved there, we didn't drink water out of it. What'd y'all do? We walked to a spring way back down as far as we could go. In about it. And uh, got, brought our drinking water up. How long before y'all start drinking that water? Well, out? not too long. Daddy got somebody to come out there and uh, clean it out and curb it and fix it up and draw, we draw the water out of it and got it fit to use. Pretty good water. Yeah. I don't know why it was let go that way. I heard some, somebody, these people that live there went over here to what we call it. I mean, live there when we moved, they went over here and got water, I think, to what we call the Cindy Spring. Mm -hmm. It's right up above. It don't run much now, but it was a good spring back then. That's where Mama Cindy washed all the Mama's clothes over there when we moved up here. Who, Cindy? Black woman? Or? Yeah, Cindy Sox Carver. Bob and Cindy Scarber lived over in that house right up above that spring. It's we gone. tore it down. Yeah, it's gone now. Yeah, we, me and I was tore it down. We done, done the bar and it burned. When did y'all build that? When did they build that uh, dig at uh, uh, storm shelter over there? That what? That storm shelter over there about uh, just off the pond road. Oh, that, that was gone when we, I mean, it wasn't no good when we come in, it still had logs across Oh, it was built for y'all then. Huh? Oh gosh, yeah, that was old man Tom Hartley, the man that daddy bought the house from, that was his torn shelter. Hmm. They'd go over and spend the night, they had beds in there. Hmm. The bad weather came up there. The bad weather came up there, just went over and got in the storm pit and spent the night. Shoot. In springtime, spring of the year, you stay a lot of nights over there, can't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having one of those. I've thought about before I built this home. Putting one underneath. Putting one under here. And I mean, actually a car, car house. Drive, bring the driveway up through there and put it under here yeah. and have a stairway up into the house. Take a lot of digging, wouldn't it? Oh, hell, I got somebody to bull, do a bulldozer. Oh, I know that. that. Still, you have to move a lot of dirt. You have to find somewhere to put all of it, too. Well, I wouldn't have to have it as wide as this building. Yeah. It's wide enough for a car. car and open both doors. Huh? Oh, a car and be able to open both doors. Yeah, 12 foot. Needed, needed at least 12 foot. Maybe a little more. This, but I didn't do it. You know why I didn't, Jeff? Right. And we had the money to do it. When I brought the driveway up and it be down deep enough to go under the house, mm -hmm. then I'd have had a, a ditch across my front yard there. I'd have had to cover over some way or do something or you couldn't walk around the house. Yeah. And I said I wasn't going to do that. Leave it like it is. See, if I put, have to put up a good fence and all and children falling off in there, I, I just didn't want to fool with it. Yeah. It would have been dangerous. But I would have liked to have had it that way. <laughs> well, that's about winding us up. We're about to run out of time. Okay, wind, wind it down. Well, We've talked about, about everything, though, haven't we? Yeah.